York City, a magic, a magic, a magic. In fact, I'm coming to York on the 26th of July. I will be at the uh, Great Yorkshire Fringe doing a rehearsal with the marvellous Rebecca Callard from Detectorists and the Borrowers and all sorts of things. It's going to be a lot of fun, my friends. Uh, and also, uh, rehearsal is on tour. Check richardherring.com slash rehearsal slash tour or richardherring.com slash gigs. You can find out if I'm coming near to you. Oxford has just gone on sale. Uh, there's loads more in the autumn, but I will be at the Edinburgh Fringe from the 2nd to the 25th of August. Not Mondays, though. Don't come on a Monday. They won't, I won't be there. Uh, at 1.30pm at the Newtown Theatre. Massive theatre. Loads of tickets to sell. Some fantastic guests coming up. Richard Osmond, Phil Wang, Lucy Beaumont, Jen Brister, Tommy Tin, and hopefully Basil Brush. Hopefully, I mean, come on. It's going to be good. Please come along uh, and support us there if you can, so that I don't lose loads of money again in Edinburgh doesn't matter what's money who cares uh, and it'll be fun so uh, and those will go out daily as audio only podcasts so all through august you can catch up with the Edinburgh fringe by staying with that audio account it'll be on the rahalastapa about feed uh, anyway let's sit back relax and enjoy the final episode of series 15 of this series of uh, this not series is podcast. I'm very tired. It's my birthday today when I'm recording this. I'm 52 years old. It's difficult to remember things now. With the brilliant no such thing as a fish team. I'm on their podcast this week as well. So check out their podcast if you want to hear me talking about how big Hitler's feet were and many other facts. I forgot to say by the way that Hitler had no hair on his chest or back. Um, I had lots of interesting Hitler facts. Um, that didn't even make it to air. So, uh, yes, do check, tune in to that. It'll be lots of fun. Do come and see me in Edinburgh or on tour. Go to rohelastapa.co.uk for more information and to become a monthly badger and get a fantastic new membership set. Hopefully we'll be ready with badges and a secret code and all sorts of stuff and a little wallet to keep your, your, your membership card in. Nothing like the Dennis the Menace fan club. Don't worry, you're going to love it. rohelastapa.co.uk uh, richardherring.com slash gigs. You know where to go. Let's sit back, relax, and enjoy. This was a really good podcast with no such thing as a fish thing. Amazing. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Leicester Square Theatre. It's the last show of this run, but has the host lost enough weight in order to wear his suit? Nobody knows in this audience, that's for sure. Will you please welcome Richard Herring? Thank you very much. Hello. Thank you very much. Hello, welcome. Look at that page ready, should I? Welcome to uh, the podcast. It's uh, Richard Herring's Lamp Stamps Tamps podcast. <laughs> Do they anything about lamp stamps or tamps? You know, tamps. You know, tamps. You know, you tamp down uh, your coffee with them when you're making your coffee in the morning. There's lots of different meanings of tamp. That's just one of them. <laughs> See if it catches on. You've got to be, keep moving them in the podcast game. Uh, although I was... Uh, I was hanging around with the 1922 committee uh, the other day. It's... No, it's, they're all right. They're just a group of people who love 1922 and its events, uh, like the formation of the USSR, the start of the Irish Civil War. They love that. I particularly like that. Uh, the creation of the Reader's Digest. Anything that happened, as long as it happened in 1922, we all love it. I mean, who remembers the Ford Ney Macumba Tariff Act? We all do. Uh, they all start calling it Rahalastapa, so I don't understand. <laughs> Don't know, that's also, they uh, call themselves after the Ku Klux Klan as well. But that's the, that the other thing they do. I'm not, I'm not so into that bit, but, you know, I like the 1922 stuff. Uh, so, yes, I have, I've managed to uh, kind of fit into the suit. I'll have to show you nearly. This is the suit. If, you're not, if you weren't with me at the beginning of the series, I've lost some weight this year. I've been losing weight. I said at the beginning of the series I was hoping to lose enough weight to be able to put on the suit that I wore in 2014 or 2015, whenever the last time I was thin. I can ne I'm near... I'm nearly there, so, uh, you know, don't do that. I'm nearly there, not quite. I've lost 24 pounds in three months. 
So that's, imagine how fat I was before. Uh, imagine, just try and imagine that. And uh, today is April Fool's Day. I don't know if you realise that. Uh, if you got caught on that at home. Uh, my daughter, it's the first time my daughter's kind of been interested in that. I was explaining it all to her yesterday and uh, we were at my mum and dad's house and my dad uh, told her of this time that he was just married to my mum and he said, I'll bring you breakfast in bed and he brought breakfast in bed and he gave her a hard-boiled egg and then when my mum hit into it, it was empty inside. It was an hilarious April <laughs> Fool's joke. Uh, and so I said to Phoebe, we'll do that to your mum in the morning. And so we, and I, we told her, we, Katie, my wife, we were going to do it in front of her. So it was all prepped. <laughs> Ed, and, I, and, I, and I did it with, I just gave her, I cracked an egg and I gave it to her. And I said, give, it, give that to mummy, give that to mummy. And mum went, oh no. And my daughter started to cry uh, and said, I thought it was a real egg. And mum went, now mummy has no food. So it didn't, <laughs> didn't work out very well. But her initial April school day, she'd been, the, the night before we got to bed going, I'm going to get up early and get you. She said, I'm going to get up early and get you. Her April Fool's joke she came up with for me was she came downstairs and said she was our dog walker who does our lunchtime dog walk who's called Carla and she was pulling some ducks behind her and was obviously herself. <laughs> and then I had to go, oh, it was Phoebe. Oh, and it was some toy ducks. What a brilliant April. Fucking idiots, kids. <laughs> Absolutely pathetic. Uh, so then cried because she didn't like the joke she played on her own. <laughs> Sort of sweet, isn't it? Anyway, my guest... I'm just going to take my jacket off. Uh, it's... Uh, oh, my phone's in that pocket. Yeah. The trousers are a bit tight. I wore this suit, actually, on uh, Friday at the, at the gig. I didn't shed it, and I couldn't do the trousers up the full weight, so I've lost enough, or it's stretched enough, from that night. <laughs> in the last three days. Anyway, my guest this week, uh, individually are probably best known as the person who did additional questions on one episode of Only Connect, uh, the writer of one episode of Newsoids, uh, someone who appeared briefly in one episode of QI bringing uh, Sandy Toxvig some, a card or something, <laughs> and the producer of Ein Kitten for Hitler, although I'm guessing I might have done that one last time he was on, so he is also the executive coordinator of one episode of Ghost Intervention. <laughs> But together, they are best known as the two-time Chortle Internet Award winners. Imagine winning two of those. My dad, that must be... How proud they must be of their two double... Double Chortle Internet Awards. It's no such thing as a fish, ladies and gentlemen. Here they are. They're drinking in the bar. James, Dad, Anna, Andy. Hello. 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 Hi, guys. I might do that while we're doing this. See if you can get this a doubly hard uh, Rubik's Cube because the letters on it have to be the right way up as well. So it's uh, I might have it then. <laughs> <laughs> you can, James can solve a uh, Rubik's Cube in a minute? I don't sure. know if your mic, is your mic working there? Uh, my, yeah, no, sorry, I've gone through for Dan. Yes, his, his mic's working fine, thank <laughs> you. <laughs> you I don't can think solve the Rubik's Cube in less than a minute. I would say a minute-ish, yeah, okay, but minute. that one does look quite hard, I must say. Yeah. It's, not, it's not far off, uh, George, the incompetent sound man. He met backstage being incompetent at sound. Did you like the bit when he said, oh, what's that noise? Yeah. yeah. That's, yeah. that's what sound men are not meant to do. <laughs> <laughs> They're meant to stay quiet. Uh, but it's it was a be. toilet, in case people <laughs> were wondering. Was, yeah. Yeah. Which he should be used to. Um, he said it's only three moves away from being finished. Being oh, out. Is it? <laughs> but then I did a couple of moves trying to make it finish. <laughs> then it wasn't. <laughs> so it's about six moves away from being finished. Uh, welcome to the show. It's very nice to have you on. Those two... two what's it like having won only two... Chortle Internet Awards. Well, you won, you won them all up until that point, didn't you, Richard? <laughs> you, then... you took it off me the, fir the, the first time, then you won it for two years in a row. Yeah. And, yeah. I, came, and I came back and won one, and then Adam Buxton's won one. And yeah. didn't you embarrass yourself that day, Dan? Yeah, I effectively destroyed our reputation in the <laughs> comedy world when I got up and was nominated to do the acceptance speech. I think I mentioned this last time on your show, when I said, we've toppled the great Kim Jong Herring, <laughs> and... <laughs> The entire crowd went, fuck you. And we had to walk, it was, the, it was the most amazing moment as a new podcast to win an award 
and have that height of excitement and walk <laughs> off being hated by the entire room. They love, they love me, all the comedians love me. So yeah, just, just, be, just be careful. Don't cross me. So shall we go through the credits I did for you? Additional, mm -hmm. James, additional yes. questions on one episode of Only Comedians. Yes, only one. Um, I, what, what? I knew the guy who wrote it, David yeah. Bodicum, who's in charge of it. Uh, and he, I sent him some ideas, and he had one of them, and he gave me a credit, which wow. was really nice. But we've been on Only Connect, haven't we? Yeah, we've yeah. yeah. been on a few yeah. times. Not me and Dan, no one would No. <laughs> no, but we, uh, us and our colleague Anne, uh, Anne Miller, who's been on the podcast lots, we were a sort of quizzing team. Yeah, and it was weird, because I got an email from Victoria Corrin um, asking us if we would take part in it, or if we would... Well, she asked if we'd take part, and I said, yeah, of course, that sounds amazing. And she said, well, you're going to have to do the audition on this day, and I thought she was asking us to go on the celebrity special. Yeah. So <laughs> when she said that we had to go and actually audition, I thought, no fucking way, we're going to get annihilated by these guys because we're just not smart enough. But we got lucky in the end. Mm. Yeah, we got to the semi-finals. Did you? Yeah, yeah, that's good. And then we're on a special last Christmas, which we yes, won. Yes, that was great fun. Yeah. Why weren't you two involved in that? Oh, we had better. I think we had better stuff to do that day. Uh, we were I on mean, University I... Challenge or something at the time. I can understand why Dan was none, but I don't, I don't, understand, why, I don't understand why you were. Well, Andy and Anna have very similar knowledge base, I think. I think I never... So this was in quite early days of QI, and I... Uh, I mean, this really is going to alienate our audience, but I actually sort of dislike quizzing and quizzes. What? Um, so I don't really like doing that kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. Good luck coming back from That's that. How about... How? But you're a nerd. I so know. So how about how? I know. I don't like people. <laughs> you, I mean, I, I really enjoy Only Connect. I think it's a great show. People. <laughs> also, people she doesn't like. Big thing there. And who does quizzes? People. So. <laughs> <laughs> I really find that quizzes bring out the worst in all humans. Yeah. Including me, by a long way. But That's what's good about them. A combination <laughs> of ego and fuck-ups that just... <laughs> it's not enjoyable to be around. Okay. Uh, Andy? Yes. Writer on one episode of Newsoids? That's right. Uh, yeah. Definitely not writer of one episode. Writer <laughs> of one sketch on one episode of Newsoids. I think a second sketch was considered, but it ended up being judged not funny. Okay. So, yeah. I, I can't believe you found that. Well, I find everything. <laughs> yeah. And uh, it says you're on an episode of QI on IMDb, but is that the one where you come on and give a piece of paper to... Must be, yeah. yeah. Bit of, card, bit of card. Yeah. yeah. I think we've, all, we've all done one thing, maybe apart from Dan. No, um, Dan's been on work. what? The executive coordinator. <laughs> oh, but that's not even a job. <laughs> executive. <laughs> like, coordinator isn't even a job, and you're the executive coordinator. <laughs> I'm the executive coordinator. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm in charge of the guy coordinating. If he doesn't coordinate very well, <laughs> I get in and I say, hey, coordinate a bit better, please. <laughs> I'm the executive coordinator on this project. Ghost interventions is what it says, not that's you. That's not me. <laughs> That's not me. That's a more exciting Daniel. All Schreiber. the rest of them are definitely. Who's the kitten for Hitler's You? That's from. That's yeah, me. We talked yeah. about. Did we talk about that? Yeah, before? we yeah. did. Ken Russell, the yeah. great director. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so many. There's so much to talk to you about. Uh, let's start at the. So I mean, I sort of know, but how did you all meet together? Let, shall I ask the question first? Why? What's? Why is it called No Such Thing as a Fish? What's that about? Right. Okay, we got that done. Because uh, you yeah, just have to ask it. How did you all meet? That's an equally dull question, but that might be. So we... Through a company is the yeah. very black yeah, <laughs> Colleague, Work for the same company. Like many colleagues meet, work in the same office. Um, <laughs> you've got to end up talking to each other, however little you want to at the start. Uh, held, held out for a few good years, though, didn't yeah. we? We really did. In the end, <laughs> in the end I had five years till we were all talking. <laughs> in the end, I had to formalise it just to get any kind of discussion out of you. Yeah. <laughs> Who cracked first? Who broke the silence first? I reckon it's probably you. Uh, but Dan. yeah, we all worked for QI, didn't we? Uh, yeah. We've all worked there for quite a few years. Um, and we got an office in London, so we all started working in the same place at the same time. Yeah. My, I, I do like how Dan started working for QI. Not my story, it's Dan's, but I'm going to tell it. Um, which is, I remember you showing me an email, Dan, uh, when we hadn't, it hadn't been long since we'd known each other, and it was basically your cover letter and CV to John Lloyd, who's our boss, and essentially what had happened is you guys had met in Oxford because your aunt had a connection, yeah. and you, he drove you home 
I, and I imagine you'd had a couple of drinks, possibly, and you were really desperate for the loo the whole time on the way home, so you couldn't talk to John properly and couldn't concentrate. And then you went, it, like, or wet yourself in the garden on the way to your house, or whatever, and then wrote John an incredibly long email that I've seen the text of, <laughs> which is Dan's subsequent research into all the people who have potentially died or exploded or almost died because they needed the loo so badly. <laughs> and that's how you get a job at QI. Yeah. <laughs> Have people died? I once was, uh, I once held a, had to hold a wee in for a long time, and then I was on, I'd just been on a safari in Tanzania, uh, and we were driving back, and I very quickly needed a wee, and very quickly was, and there was nowhere to stop because also there were lions. <laughs> uh, and so we were driving, driving, and I was going, oh God, we, we, I was, I'm really in pain, I really need to stop. And they pulled into a, 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 truck, a truck stop eventually after about two hours, and I went to the loo, and there was like, a, it was one loo and there was a big queue outside and I couldn't go. Ooh. I'd been holding on to it so long I couldn't go. And then I had to go and I had to get back in the car, still in total agony and drive for another oh, hour. No. Because I kind of got pee shot, you know, I got bladder yeah. shy, whatever it is as well, because there were people around, but then I was just conscious we had to get going as well and I couldn't wee. And I thought, if, if this is going to kill anyone, this journey will kill me. Wow. I would have thought it would get to a stage where the shyness stopped working. <laughs> yeah, it did. Not that. Not when I had a toilet in front of me. It was What's, a terrible thing. Wasn't there a guy who, um, it might be uh, a sort of fable, but he died because he was holding it. Yeah, Tico Brahe. Tico mm -hmm. Brahe. Yeah. He had a fake Stronger. golden nose, yeah. Wait, yes. was that he died from holding in a week? He was too polite to leave the table when he needed a piss because he was around royalty. Yes. And he thought, I, I can't leave. So he held it in and then he died. But how long? I think you have to be at the table so long for that to kill you. Yeah, he must been at the table a couple of days. <laughs> <laughs> well, supposedly he got a ruptured bladder, but some people say he was poisoned. Really? Yeah. I think he had a pet stag that fell down the stairs. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> that, that sounds like a very random detective's sort of, <laughs> I'm trying to connect the dots here, <laughs> comment. What does that have to do with the story? It, well, it, does, it doesn't, but it's... <laughs> He's an obscure guy, so it's, it's, we're not going to talk gold, about... We're not going to circle back nose, to Taika yeah. Brahe, are we? You know, we've got to get all the Taika Brahe information out now. Yeah. yeah. We're not going to come back to him later in the chat, are we? Have you got... I'm, I'm quite <laughs> have a few questions. <laughs> which you preempted and ruined. Sorry. <laughs> one that was about the stag, one was about the nose. Is it ruder to die at the table with the royal family than to we? <laughs> Don't know. Yeah, maybe. Or just piss yourself. I mean, that's the day, you know, they would get to point... I would imagine you get to the point where you just... Like you say, you just yeah. pissed yourself. Yeah, you would think so. Well, if yeah. you die, you probably would do if yeah. you had a very full bladder. I don't and know. shit yourself, probably. I don't know if that does happen. You do, I think you do shit yourself, don't you? But, but it I might be know. that the king was halfway through a really, really long story or joke or something important. He was saying something really important. That might be it. Oh, my God. Like, so when an, a waiter interrupts you with a meal as you get to the punchline, yeah. the yeah. worst version is to just die as you're... <laughs> That'd Whereas actually, if someone's telling you a funny anecdote, it's quite flattering to piss yourself, isn't it? <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's the greatest compliment you can have. <laughs> but it's not, it's, a, it's only a compliment to an anecdote, it's not a compliment to a nice meal. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently the queen, if she gets bored in a conversation... <laughs> no. 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 <laughs> Should we just pretend you weren't here for this point? Just every time you speak, should we just cut you out? <laughs> Three-person podcast. <laughs> no, she has a she she picks up her handbag and she supposedly does this kind of movement, which suggests to everyone who her need to get her out of situations. Go, she's bored now. Let's get her out of the right? out of the party. Yeah, <laughs> that seems a bit of an obvious signal to me. <laughs> 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 the handbag has help written on it. Help. For I'm, listeners, they're just swinging their handbags. There's no other, you know, that's the movement. Yeah. I read the other day that the Queen um, got given a fake hand on a stick that she can wave if she gets tired. No. <laughs> yes. Yeah. In, the, some, in what, the carriage? Some in cars, students yeah. In, yeah, some yeah. students in Australia gave her this... It's like a stick with a glove on it, and the glove is stuffed, and if she gets tired, she can just wave to people <laughs> outside the window. Like in eventually, 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 <laughs> Oh, that's nice. Eventually her hand will get tired of waving the stick. <laughs> so she will need another hand on a stick to hold I, the first hand. I think it's a lever. I think she kind of just presses <laughs> oh, a button and it kind of waves. That's amazing. Yeah. I mean, she's the queen. She could get someone else to 
wave the hand. Yeah. Oh, just get them kneel down behind. Yeah, <laughs> stunt, a stunt hand. I mean, in a way, they don't yeah. need the hand. They could just use the hand of the other person. It's true. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's that magician, uh, Drummond Money Coots. Oh, One yeah. of the best oh, yeah. named magicians ever. Um, <laughs> Drummond Money Coots. He performed for the Queen, and he claims that when you do a card trick for the Queen and you say to her, pick a card, any card, she gets a lady in waiting to swoop in and pick a card on her behalf. Right. Yeah. The stunt hand. Yeah. Well, well, the, she gets a lady waiting to come in with a card already, say, this is the one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's the Queen of Diamonds, isn't it? Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> There's a really good one. Uh, Muhammad Ali was a uh, magician. It wasn't his main thing, as you probably all know, but <laughs> he... It's very hard to do the sleight of hand stuff with the gloves on, isn't it? <laughs> Is this your car? <laughs> that would have been incredible. <laughs> um, but he, um, he, he used to practice sleight of hand magic tricks, um, but he was also very religious, wasn't he, Muhammad Ali? So his thing was, he would do the trick, and he would go, is this your card? And people would go, yes. But because of his religion, and his religion saying that you're not allowed to pull tricks on people, he would then explain the trick entirely to the people <laughs> post doing it. Which is, um, breaks every rule, apparently. Yeah. Kicked out of the magic circle. Yeah. <laughs> and he still tricked them to begin with, so it's just yeah. like repenting after you've done a sin. Yeah, exactly. Which is my favourite kind of religion. <laughs> 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 You're allowed to sin as long as you say sorry. Um, <laughs> what amazing, obscure fact do you have about each other? <laughs> <laughs> that no one's ever heard before. Some excitement um, in the room. Um, I've only got the... I can only think of the thing that Andy told us we can never, ever tell anyone about his grandmother. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. About his grandmother? Don't say that. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> we have it's cut, so cool. We've cut that out of the podcast about 20 times. Uh, yeah. <laughs> he or keeps okay. saying it and then going, never put that out. <laughs> <laughs> James knows every single song and dance move to the band Steps. Yes. See. I mean... We would have do, to see it. That. Uh, <laughs> That's not going to happen, but that is true. <laughs> he knows every single yeah. bit of choreography to steps. I blame the fact that my little sister was very young when I was at uni, so that's why I learned all the dances. But actually, I just love it. <laughs> <laughs> and your little sister hates it. Uh, so why did you make me do that? I, it was actually on my um, when my wife's here, and on my wedding day, all step songs were banned. <laughs> because she thought really? I might dance to them. Really? <laughs> I mean, that's essentially a rule of getting married. To some of that sort of all marriages. It's assumed, unless <laughs> stated otherwise. Um, Anna, yeah. the night we won the first Chortle Award... Oh, yeah. <laughs> ..which was at a comedy club, stole a two-and-a-half-litre bottle of Caesar salad sauce... Yeah. <laughs> from the kitchens and big. took it home. It was big. Really it was, big. You couldn't imagine, imagine the salad it would have gone on. And then yeah. um, the second time we won, you cycled into a canal, didn't you? <laughs> yeah. I, did, <laughs> I didn't fall into the canal. I think I cycled into our friend Will Seawood, a comedian who saved me from falling into the canal. But yeah, I did take some tar tartar sauce, Caesar salad. It was Caesar salad sauce, wasn't it? Yeah. Caesar sauce. As, as I said to the police. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> They have still have not they, got me. For fuck's sake. <laughs> Will Seward, who is a friend of ours, who's a comedian, um, if you don't know him, you all must check him out. He did a couple of shows in Edinburgh. One was called Bouncy Castle Hamlet, in which he oh, yes. had a bouncy castle and they did Hamlet on yeah. it. Um, <laughs> uh, As Shakespeare would have wanted. Yeah. <laughs> And he was so excited because it got a review and he didn't expect it to get a review. And he got, he saw five stars and it was only when he started re reading the review that he realized none of the stars were actually colored in. And what he had. <laughs> <laughs> the first zero star show. I cannot believe you've done that to him. He is great. He's amazing. Now... He went to Halloween once dressed as the siege of Sun Yat-sen in China. It was basically, <laughs> he was the summer palace and he gave everyone around him little Sun Yat-sens and they were launching arrows at him. He's an amazing guy. He's awesome. I didn't ask for a fact about him though, did I ask no. for a fact? That's, you can't just give facts about different people that you know. That's... I've got a fact about Dan. Oh, yeah, I'm yeah, Dan, what's... He's so open, I don't think there's any secrets. Yeah. The, the, yeah, I don't the, think... Your middle name? 
Oh, yeah, that yeah. has been mentioned on the podcast. Yeah. But, um, what, the other middle name, though? Indiana? Yes. Oh, yeah. The yeah. self-dubbed. Have we mentioned that? Yeah. Uh, it's been mentioned, but yeah, Dan's middle name is Indiana. Uh, but he gave it himself <laughs> because at school he didn't think his middle name was cool enough. Yeah, I moved, I, I was living in Hong Kong for my, I was born in Hong Kong, lived there till I was 12, and then I moved to Sydney, and I was the only one in my family who didn't have two middle names, so when I arrived in Sydney, I said to my parents, I would like to give myself another middle name, right. and they said, that's fine, and I loved Indiana Jones, so I, I said, Indiana, yeah. and uh, so I became Daniel Indiana Craig Schreiber, um, <laughs> but as James pointed out, only last year, which I didn't know, what was my... Uh, well, it's just an acronym... Well, it's just reads out dicks. Just dicks, yeah. 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 <laughs> but wait, didn't your, your friends anyway in Hong Kong called you something that you thought was a compliment for ages? Was it Dan Dan? Dan? Dan. Oh yeah, I had you. such a cool name. So my name's Dan, but in Hong Kong I got called Dan Dan. And it was one of those things <laughs> where every older kid was like, hey Dan Dan. And I, I got so excited because I was so popular. And it was only when I got to Australia and it was on Facebook that I, I won this ping pong game against my friend from Hong Kong and I said, Dan Dan wins again. And someone said, that's hilarious. You know Dan Dan means balls in Chinese. <laughs> and I'm in, like, I'm an adult now and I wrote to my friends in Hong Kong going, did you know my, my name Dan Dan <laughs> means balls? And they all went, you didn't know? <laughs> my whole school life, everyone was like, hey, balls. <laughs> I had no idea. It took me a while to realise that Indiana was Indiana Jones. I just thought you really liked the quite right-wing anti-abortion state of Indiana. <laughs> yeah. I'll name myself after that. His two passions place. collided. Yeah. <laughs> Good. You sort of... Uh, the, the QI thing sort of sounds a bit like um, a sort of nerd... I mean, a more nerdy version of the X-Men, right? You're all brought together <laughs> by John Lloyd into a country house, I understand. Mm. That yes. you've been to for a lot longer than everyone else has been to. Is that right? Wait. Yeah, it was oh, a long no. initiation. Wait, yeah. which initiation? Long initiation period for yeah. me. Yes. Um, but so I don't get the reference because I've never seen the X Men. But okay. I'm going to say, yes, it is like that. It's like a load of nerds in a big country house. That's all you need to is know. Is it? Yeah. I'm going to watch it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And before you worked in QI, you worked in, in the Edinburgh, oh, the Scottish Parliament? Scottish Parliament, yeah. I worked for an MSP called Jamie McGregor, um, who uh, was an MSP for the... So that's an MP, but in Scotland, so they put an S in the middle. And uh, he was an MP for the Highlands and Islands, and my job was mostly dealing with kind of constituency casework of people who lived in the Highlands, but, you know, the kind of people who make the biggest fuss to MPs are often the most um, unusual people. So... A lot of my job involved trying to convince this guy called... I'm not, I won't say his name. <laughs> <laughs> that um, wild panthers were not killing all of his lambs. And we had to go up and inspect his farm and he showed us sheep carcass after sheep carcass with various tooth prints saying, I know someone's let the panthers out and it's the panthers and it's the eagles and they're massacring my lambs. And so that's, yeah. And I don't know it wasn't true. Sounds okay. like it is. Someone's massacring them, isn't they? It might Someone's be massacring him. the lads. <laughs> <laughs> it might be him in his sleep. Yeah. <laughs> you used to work next to Ruth Davidson, right? I worked with her, yeah. She was, um, yeah, who was now the leader of the Scottish Conservatives and awesome and always thought she was brilliant. Yeah. She won't remember me, though. Yeah. Uh, I've got one thing I had meant to do. I really wanted to get you on. So can you get the QI elves to stop tweeting that herrings communicate by farting? <laughs> That's all you're on here for. Well, stop doing it. Because every time... <laughs> I, will, I will not. But every time that gets treated, I get like... It's, it's like International Fucking Men's Day for me. <laughs> I'm farting. When's that? <laughs> I, don't, I don't think there is one. I don't think they'd be allowed to have one. But, uh, uh, yes, we will all. stop doing Thank that. Thank you very much. Sorry. Well, we, we actually did a podcast about herrings about two weeks ago that hasn't gone out yet. Oh, so. really? oh yeah. What was our fact about uh, herrings? What was, was, oh, was the uh, adultery thing? The... Oh, how did you find out about that? <laughs> my, my wife's going to be furious. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I kept it secret. That's the whole, that's the whole point. Of the, of um, what was it, Andy? What it was was the, in, in Scotland in the 18th century, herring fishing was a huge industry and people believed that if, if, herring, if adultery had happened in a particular area of the coast, that the herring would punish the people in that village, for example, by leaving. 
Yeah. 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 We are very judgmental. <laughs> We're very <laughs> judgmental. <laughs> <laughs> and hypocritical in many ways. <laughs> <laughs> there was a big story as well back in the day where um, there was communication breakdown between, it was, I think it was England and Russia, where... They th the English thought the Russians were coming in, and this was submarines uh, yeah, that were Russia detecting it. Yeah, and, um, but it turns out it was herring farts that were uh, at a similar frequency to yeah. what... <laughs> so it was, it was a Swedish thought that there were Russian submarines in their waters, but it turned out to be farting herrings. Yeah. <laughs> and it was, you know, there was a lot... It's not we helping. Should <laughs> we should tweet that. <laughs> we should... <laughs> I can give you lots of facts about me farting. <laughs> Been eating a lot of cabbage and cauliflower soup. It's awful. That's that's that makes you fart. Put that in the book. <laughs> Tweet that, you fuckers. Um, <laughs> was the QI like? I heard you talk. This is on Stuart Goldsmith's podcast. I heard you talking about that. The, the, there was like a private club of QI in Oxford. Mm. There was a bookshop and a, a yeah, member's club. Yeah, Street. It was. Um, Kind of when QI first started, um, they had this private members club and they wanted that to be a big thing where all the intelligentsia in Oxford went and hung out. Turns um, out there aren't any. It's a nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, but yeah, it was basically, um, it never worked. They, they brought me, in, when I first started, I was an accountant. Yes. And they brought me in to do their accounts as well as doing QI. Or rather, I said I wouldn't do QI if they didn't let me do their accounts as well. <laughs> <laughs> and so when I went there, it was um, in a pretty bad shape. Okay. Um, so we closed it down. Okay. <laughs> what happened to the guy who's doing their accounts before you turned up and assisted on doing their accounts? I don't know what he does now. <laughs> or indeed any of their staff. <laughs> it was an amazing building. It's, it's, um, it was meant to be like the old coffee houses where the idea was it was about conversation. It was John Lloyd's big project when he started QI. And it was an amazing project because most TV shows do a tie-in book, right? Or... He did a tie-in building. It was, it was so ambitious. It was so cool. And there was a cafe downstairs. There was a bookshop, which I worked in, um, which was a round bookshop. And it had, didn't have biography and history. It had you know, just categories that were like um, passion. or And it just, what, what it meant was you could mix up books in a way that you wouldn't usually in a bookshop. And there was a vodka bar downstairs. It was a private members club. And then there was the offices where QI was being researched. And... Uh, it was three years or two years of just an incredible, drunken, beautiful experience, but made no money, so it had yeah. to close down. But <laughs> I so wish there were more buildings like it. It was, it was just packed with interesting people. And, I, and I, I actually hired the initial staff for it, which I think led to the... Uh, I was the accountant no. as well. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, I was in charge. I didn't know anything. I was behind the bar. I used to serve people, and they would say, can we have scones? And I would say, and what, so what, how does that work? Do you get two of them, or is it a... I used to go to the kitchen and go, they've ordered this thing, and I'm not quite sure what this is, but I'll bring down whatever you give me. And it was chaotic, but it was, it was stunning. It was so cool, and... Um, it Coffee don't... House is actually very controversial, though, even in their day. So John Lloyd should have known. They were the. Have you ever read that? There's an amazing tract about coffee houses when they came in, which was like 1600s, wasn't it, when coffee came over from America, and all men started going off to coffee houses and having political ideas together, and women were really pissed off because they couldn't really access them, obviously, because they were barely allowed to do anything social. Um, and there were these huge tracts written about how coffee is evil, is the thing of the devil, and coffee houses are a heinous, elitist thing. Really? Wow. So that's what actually you were a part of. What, what about vodka bars? <laughs> <laughs> vodka bars, fine. <laughs> <laughs> Right, I'll ask you some emergency questions, cool. and you can choose to answer these with facts that spin off, if you want. I don't know how good you are at... I suspect, James, you're quite good at just coming up with facts about anything, having talked to you we'll for see. two minutes. <laughs> uh, we'll see how good the rest of you uh, are. Uh, uh, have you ever sat on a tuffet? What do you think a tuffet is? I mean, that... <laughs> That should be e easy. Well, Little Miss Muffet was written by a famous entomologist, wasn't it? Entomologist? Yeah. Was it? Yeah, he was like an expert on insects and spiders. Really? Yeah, unfortunately I can't remember his name. I didn't but, know that. Yeah, I think a tuffet is a little chair, isn't it? Yeah. I think it's like a little hillock. A little hillock, yeah, yeah. sorry. A little hillock. Oh, What's I a hillock? Was... What's a hillock? It's a wow. small mound. So, okay, so it's a naturally formed I thing. think it's a naturally formed mound with some grass on it. I yes. think it has to be soft, the top of a hillock. Yeah. 
I don't think you could have a, a bare earth or rock hillock. No. Here's, what a, was fact, the question here's again? a fact for you about little Miss Muffet. You can use this. It's in a place called Brookman's Park in Hertfordshire. Uh, it's believed to have been written, and there's a place called Moffat's Farm, uh, and that's where Little Miss Muffet is supposedly written. I nearly bought the house that Little Miss Muffet was written. No wow. way. Wow. Yeah, that's good. And why Very didn't you? Because they decided not to sell Spiders it to me. Everyone. <laughs> <laughs> As many of the houses I tried to buy, they went, no. Nah. <laughs> You're not destroying the hi historical heritage of this place by coming. Wow. You I know, a... there's, there's that thing about all the old nursery... So most nursery rhymes come from the 19th century, although people claim that Ring a Ring of Roses is like a plague thing, but I don't think there's any evidence for that. Uh, but one of the people who's the architect of a lot of nursery rhymes is Mr. Bastard, who was... So the MP for Devon in the very early 19th century was Sir John Pelexfen Bastard. And I believe his wife, or it might have been his sister, Margaret wrote all like all the famous nursery rhymes that you would know today. Really? Many wow. of them, yeah. Wow. So they come down from passed down from bastards. How long does the uh, rights issue go back to their family? So I, when you sing, it's amazing those things when you sing them to your kids and you think, oh, I, you know, this was sung to me by my parents and they, and and so on. It's amazing those of everything. Those are the things that get passed down. Yeah. For, well, 200 years, you think? Yeah, yeah, incredible. Well, there was that thing, wasn't there? The happy birthday rights. Yes. So anyone who used happy birthday suddenly discovered that that was owned by some big corporation. Yeah. And then it turned out very recently that they didn't own it at all. So there's been countersuings that's been going on for people who've been sued initially by... Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which is no crazy. one would ever do. It sort of became this sort of famous joke within sitcoms in America, really, wasn't it? That whenever yeah. it came to sing Happy Birthday, people would either sing something else or not be able to sing it. And yeah. yeah. We had that thing with the uh, 12 Days of Christmas on QI, which was all the way through, you can sing it. It's completely out of copyright, apart from the phrase Five Gold Rings, which isn't the copyright. <laughs> and so we had to, we could sing the whole of it, and then really? we just had to stop at that bit. That's amazing. And That's, there was that similar thing. This is one of my favorite facts, which is that, do you remember that at uh, the beginning of DVDs, there would be the anti-piracy crime ad, do 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 you wouldn't steal a car. Remember that? <laughs> do do you wouldn't steal a handbag. Um, <laughs> I don't remember it being narrated by some stoner. <laughs> yeah, do, 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 do. Dude, you wouldn't steal that. <laughs> anyway. Um, it's the whole plot of dude, where's my car, isn't yeah. it? <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, it turns out they didn't have permission to use that song. <laughs> they stole that song. And the guy, the guy who wrote that song found that out when he was watching a Harry Potter DVD and he was like, that's my song. And he, and he sued them. <laughs> Amazing. And it also makes a presumption about me that I don't like. That's the thing. I, I fucking might steal a car. If it was as easy yeah. as da pirating a video, I fucking would. <laughs> I'd steal all of them. I'd my big... I'd have a car dealership and sell them. <laughs> sell them really cheaply because I'd, I'd stolen them. So don't judge me, mate. I might do... And if, I, if you do steal a car, I go, yeah, well, I'm definitely going to steal a video. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They've started with a massive thing and gone down, yeah. You wouldn't what? steal a massive jar of Caesar sauce. <laughs> <laughs> Was the whole Chortle Award thing just the part of the sting, the, the clever? Yeah. To get, we've really... got this whole worked out. We can get, we can get more Caesar yeah. sauce than you've ever seen in your the life. The whole podcast. That's yeah. why we made it. I'd have some very dry salads. What, <laughs> what, have you done with the, what have you done with the Caesar sauce that you sold? Do, do, you... do you know, it sat in my house for so long, I lived with other people and someone eventually threw it away. So that uh, was wasteful. And I'm that is truly an evil sorry. crime. Can we get... Yeah. I, I've al I'm always curious about this. Can we get in trouble for the fact that Anna is now admitting to a crime. You can't. Well, can Anna, can <laughs> Anna get in trouble? I, uh, no one's gonna, so there's this thing that's happened, uh, you have probably read about it, that the police have said in the last few months that any yeah. amount that's less than 2,000 pounds that's stolen from a shop, they won't prosecute. And I, I think it's 2,000. I thought it was I, 30 pounds. No, it's like that, it's either 1,000 or 2,000. So it's really bad. And so you get, so for instance, I had a thing from my bike stolen the other day and I went into the bike shop and they said that people are getting their handlebars stolen all the time and it's because people know that now the police have a directive that says you don't need to prosecute that. And so I don't know if they are chasing up every... Uh, Cotton but I think Caesar equally salad, we're not Caesar saying that dressing. everyone should just go and steal massive jars of Caesar sauce, are well, we? Well, maybe you wouldn't steal a car, but think about stealing a bike. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> cheap car. It's a 1,999 pound car. And it's an expensive handbag, isn't it? 2,000 pounds. That is a, that's a designer label. <laughs> I've admitted loads of crimes on this podcast and they've never come from me. I do it to taunt the police, really, because I know some of, them listen, some of them listen. I'm like Jack the Ripper, or whoever wrote the letters. Probably Jack the Ripper. Yeah. Sorry, what kind of crimes were these that are like Jack the Ripper? Stealing uh, oh. pick a mix. I always, take, I always take one pick a mix, but those are expensive. If you, say, if you take like a bag of those, you're probably over the one the one thousand yeah, pounds. Yeah. <laughs> they're rare, they're, you know, I do it as a sort of Robin Hood gesture because I feel the pricing of pick and mix is unfair. Do you and give all the sweets to, a, to the poor? No, I eat them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I've done that less often because now I'm on a diet, so now I can't. I can't now I can't eat them, so I have to steal um, nut cashew nuts. <laughs> They're, they're expensive as well, you know. Yeah. And they're yeah, very, I, they're, I think they're also quite fattening. They Sorry are. to bust yeah. your bubble, but, <laughs> <laughs> but don't steal them. Yeah. They t- they take a very uh, time effective to produce cashew nuts. Do you know about cashew nuts? Oh yeah. Um, there's the, there's yeah. Only, yeah. There's and hardly. Then, I saw them being picked and yeah. There's, a, t- there's almost no nut. Yeah. Compared with the volume of stuff that gets taken off the is it a tree or a bush tree? Tree, I think, isn't it? Yeah, it's uh, this huge green mass, isn't it? This huge yes. green fruit with a tiny little cashew sitting in the middle of it. Mm. But I would say they're worth the price, cashew nuts. Yeah. Yeah. I'm um, sorry, but I, <laughs> I, I wanted to get that on record that I think, <laughs> compared with a pine nut, I think they're very good value for money. <laughs> they are. Especially if you steal them. And they're, 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 they're <laughs> equal with everything. What is more important to you, brains or beauty? Well, I mean, it has it, to let's be. say in other people. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <Wow. laughs> I think we're in trouble if everyone says beauty. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, what about... Uh, what is more important, brains or beauty? Not to uh, you. What is m- oh. objectively more for, important? For what? Like, if yeah, I was yeah. launching a rocket at NASA, I wouldn't be like, let's get really hot people in here <laughs> to... Uh, Overall, as a human being, is it better to be clever or beautiful? It's got to be beautiful because that's just like evolutionarily, you just fancy people who are hot, don't you? And that's um, because hot equals fit, as in physically fit, which means you can hunt and gather well. And I think we haven't evolved beyond that yet, have we? That's interesting, though, because you would say the one thing that differentiates us from animals is that we can make things and build things and fix things. And that's a cleverness. Yeah, but it hasn't been long enough for us to have evolved to really fancy that. That's why no one's really fancying Stephen Hawking, even though they think he's <laughs> awesome. Uh, I mean, there's, they're fancying <laughs> Ryan Gosling. Okay, look, I'm sorry, it was the first name that sprung. <laughs> Who's someone else with glasses? Uh, <laughs> I'm literally right next to you. <laughs> You were too absurd even to enter this equation. <laughs> uh, I, I think but humans do still fancy people who are physically kitted out for going out and hunting stuff and yep. gathering stuff. That's right? why on Love Island, I like the hunting and gathering tasks <laughs> that they have to do. It's great. In a, lot of, in a lot of animals, you have it where you have like the really fit animal who has sex with, let's say, the males. So the really fit <laughs> males who have sex with the females. Yeah. But then you also have the sneaky, clever males who can kind of somehow sneak their way into the females. So uh, I wonder yeah. if humans are a bit like that as well. <laughs> well, well, I think, I think this is a crime that might get prosecuted if this is... <laughs> If this is an admission. <laughs> they're, they're kind of sneaky. They're, they're clever. Very clever. Misused his intelligence, I would say. <laughs> I think Cattenbrook can sleep sound, can <laughs> <laughs> Not with you around. <laughs> Good. Um, <laughs> that was a question for dating. Uh, there's a dating section here. Uh, I don't know why I put it in a book for my fans. I suppose <laughs> Hope Springs Eternal. Um, if you, this is a question for dating. If you could have a sexual superpower, what would it be? A, s- a 
sexual superpower. So is that so like you, a normal a superpower? A, day, a normal superpower, but it's sexy, like strength or invisibility? Or, or is it a specifically... <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, James! <laughs> Just the ability to make people consent, is that all you need? <laughs> So you said you can't be prosecuted for things you say on here, didn't you? The police will finally call. So, so I think, is, um, what about, uh, cor corkscrew penis is always the thing that we always read about because a lot yeah. of things have that and I think that would be quite fun for men if I were a man. <laughs> what? Well, in so what du sense? Ducks have it, don't they? And I think it, have it in <laughs> what, as, very, a, as a it's, power. It's not a... It's yeah, not you not could a, do it like a spinny, it would be like a roller coaster. What, so you would... <laughs> Yeah. You just round You could round. also open a bottle of wine with it. It should be that would be, that'd be very seductive, wouldn't it? <laughs> you're the most popular guy at any party if you're doing that. You'd be busy the whole night. You'd just be in the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> Can you open a beer with well, it? Um, or a spe so it's not like se you sex flight. It's a sort of specific <laughs> sex. Sex flight we... is a super. You know, it's well, invisibility. Um, yeah, but it's but it's a specifically <laughs> sexual. Must, God, we do so much on animal sex and animal genitalia and weird things like that. Yeah, yeah. but everything I think about, I think I can't say that now. <laughs> <laughs> You're done in this conversation, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Because I was thinking of those, like, the octopuses where the penis detaches and then swims along to find the female. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, you yeah. would send it on tasks. Yeah. yeah. Well, they, they, like those, um, those cuttlefish where they, to, they're trying to sneak... They're the sneaky cuttlefish because they're not the alpha males. They go up to a female and they start flirting with the female, but they make their back half, because they can camouflage themselves, they make their back half look like another female. So when the alpha male looks over... He just sees two female cuttlefish having a chat. But from the female cuttlefish perspective, she sees a male chatting her up. Yeah, that's such a good superpower, actually. That's so, great. Doesn't yeah. that just mean the, the, the other male cuttlefish comes over and bums the... <laughs> <laughs> that yeah, that it does, does happen. It does, it does happen. Yeah. That does that happen. Sometimes the female disguise is so good that the male gets yeah. folded into the harem of the alpha male cuttlefish <laughs> and gets yeah. stuck there. It's a conga line <laughs> that just travels down. Are there any female cuttlefish here? No! <laughs> that's, that's been for thousands of years. That's basically a chat room, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> there's just one male cuttlefish fucking all the female cuttlefish here somewhere else. <laughs> Story of our lives. Story of our lives. Good. That's, uh, well, you're, the, 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 all, this podcast always began from that uh, diphylactic thing, didn't it? Wasn't that the first fact that the yeah. two yeah. Yeah, penis. kind of. That's the story, isn't it? We were in the office and we were just chatting about how many men in the world have two penises. Yeah, that was, it was the truth of that. We always say that, and I, it's one of those weird things where you realise we've slightly misremembered how it began, but James and I were editing a version of the four of us sitting around for the first time talking facts, and it was while we were waiting for an episode to load that there was a silence between us and <laughs> we were sitting and it was like 9 p.m. in the office. Everyone had been home, left the office three hours ago and we had nothing left to say to each other <laughs> as we were waiting and James broke the silence by going, do you know there were over 600 men in the world with two penises? <laughs> and that was the moment where I, for me personally, I realized that's what we do. That is our life. <laughs> that we, break, we break silences with that sentence and that's why... I think the podcast has been what it's been. Yeah, because bit. the answer to that is, really? As opposed to, I think we should call it uh, for the night. Let's go home. <laughs> no, no, let's open a couple of bottles of wine. <laughs> well, it's, well, it's about, but it's an interesting thing because it's about the relationship between the four of you as well. It's not just... 
you know, it, I, th I think it's about taking the fact and 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 then exploring it and and, and finding where it goes. And that kind of it, there's a competitiveness to this, even if you don't like quizzes. There's a sort of competitiveness <laughs> to who's got the best fact and who's got the worst fact and who hasn't got a fact. But it's the <laughs> Dan. Uh, it's, so, but you know, but the, the, somehow the four of you, if it's, if it's an, a sort of accidental coming together, or if, it is, if it's, or did you out the whole office? Did you go us four or work together well, as a team? Or just... we were the ones who were free most, weren't we? Yeah. Um, so we were the ones who were available to do it. Uh, but actually, it was quite obvious early on that the four of us had a really good kind of rapport between ourselves. Yeah. But also, it's fun, isn't it? I mean, you know this as a comic, because you do a lot of this as well in your stand-up. It's, it's, it could be everyday life, or it can be history. But when you read an amazing fact from history, your mind naturally goes to, I now know the fact, but what happened just after that fact? What was the conversation between those two people in history? Yeah. Or that's where I think, as a podcast, we have the best bit. So... The facts actually aren't, that's not the race. The race is who's going to find the fun angle on what the conversation might have been after the fact happened. And that leads to the fun bit of the, of the thing. QI is largely Sandy Toxvig saying a fact. And then that bit that Alan and all the rest of them do is that's where we get excited by. It's, you know, I can't think of a fact to demonstrate. We're kind of that. taking it in turns to be Sandy, aren't we? In, the sh in each show, whenever we do a fact, we're setting the others up for yeah, what exactly. might be funny. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. a cuttlefish transforming itself into a female in its yeah. backside. Anyone could have found that fact. That's out there. It's what you then... It's the chat we just had yeah, is yeah, the sure. fun bit. That's, sure. that's the great bit. And then what's not fun about it is talking about what was fun about it. Yeah. <laughs> That's the bit. That I, and it that's was good. It was, it, it, was, it was. it was good when we did that funny bit a minute ago, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's well, that's, that's why we edit. That's, <laughs> why, that's why we edit every show to within an inch of its life. Yeah. yeah. But I if I, if I could do another ten minutes on why that is a very fun. <laughs> <laughs> these guys do it all the time. Don't be fooled. We yeah. get after a show. These lot are like. So remember that bit when you said yeah. that? How yeah. funny was that? Yeah, and that bit when you said that. that. I, our show should really be called. And that's funny because. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But I think that's what we're in podcasts, and podcasts are clearly are working as a, this new medium, as you guys show, because you know you're touring the world with this and, and playing the O2. It's kind of of the, uh, well, the Hammer Hammer Apollo. It's it's in it, that's in, that's insane. Like within four or five years, you know, as a comedian, you would it'd be very very rare to get to the point where you could garner an audience that that would fill that venue. It I've been going insane. for 30 years and I have not filled that venue. So, you know, it's, right. it's, it's interesting. But I think it's that, the, what, the podcasts that work, it's the ones where it's the relationship of the people rather than really even what the, when yeah. obviously the content and the idea is important, but it's more about... I think all those people in that room, they just want to be part of the conversation, right? Because they all have their yeah. own facts and they want to chat and they want to... Yeah, I mean, what we've basically done is we've tapped into a massive reserve that no one else had discovered yet, which is the tens of thousands of nerds around yeah. the world which weren't really welcome at mainstream comedy events because they're <laughs> not cool enough. And we've, we've sucked them all in. There are loads more of them than you thought. Yeah, and they've got so much disposable income. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Um, <coughs> I'll ask you another question. Let's see. Let's see where we go from there. Let's see what the magic of the book. Let's go early because it's the end of the series. It's a great it, book, by the way. Oh, thank you very much. It's, 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 it's uh, yeah, it's all right. It's no, <laughs> it's no QI 2019. The, no such thing as a fish 2019 book, is it? That must be coming out soon. Book of the year 2019. That's what yeah. I'm trying to get to. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, haven't haven't signed the deal. But haven't it'll signed happen. the deal, but by the time this goes out, I we will have. Well, yeah. hopefully, <laughs> we will have. <laughs> Does sex with a robot count as cheating on your partner? Ah, uh, classic herring, classic farty question, herring. Question twenty. Uh, I'll yes. say yeah, yeah. Go on then. Yeah, I think so. I think it does because humans respond to robots as if they're other humans, even though they're not. But humans are idiots. So we actually did a podcast quite recently about how people feel really bad about killing robots. Um, and I remember reading an article about how um, you, like, if you rip the head of a teddy bear, then you're assumed to be a psychopath. 
But if you swat a fly, that's completely fine. But a teddy bear is a lump of wool, and a fly is obviously a living creature. And similarly with robots, you know, people, there are lots of instances of people either getting really furious with robots and beating them up, or not wanting to hurt them at all. If a robot says, please don't switch me off, then people who are told to switch them off really don't most of the time. Yeah, that was an experiment where I think it was something like 80 people were told to turn this robot off, and the robot said, please don't turn me off. It's going dark. I don't want to die. <laughs> and, <laughs> That's, and, and you're all the problem. All of you yeah. making that noise. <laughs> but then on the other hand, there was a, a robot called Hitchbot, which was supposed to be sent off hitchhiking to see how far it could get with human kindness. And they set it off on the side of the road in Boston and it was found murdered in a ditch 17 <laughs> days <Yeah>. later. <laughs> yeah. They decapitated yeah. it. They took its head off, ripped its arm off and beat it with its own arm. <laughs> it's very dangerous hitchhiking, though. That's not a fair experiment. <laughs> that, that happens to 50% of hitchhikers. It's actually not very dangerous. Um, <laughs> I read up on this for that podcast. People should hitchhike more. Yeah. It's yeah. crazy that we don't. It's it, like the death rates of hitchhiking are less than the death rates of getting in a car with your mum. Um, <laughs> yeah, but your mum is a killer. <laughs> <laughs> She is an extremely dangerous driver. She's been banned three times. <laughs> I think Vic Reeves hitchhiked with... Was he hitchhiking with Fred West? Was that... that, that like, really? What? I, I heard that. that no, okay, that was on this, wasn't yeah, it? He mentioned that on this, yeah. yeah. How does he... Did, so did well, he, he, know he's, he didn't realise... He, he looks back and he's convinced that it was... Uh, you know, West. all famous people kind of know each other. <laughs> 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 they were like... Don't tell. Um, I, I, I hitched like quite a lot when, during when I, my year off, and you know. But I, there was one time I got in a car with like a couple who, uh, the woman was sitting in the back and the, da, the, guy, the guy was driving, and they didn't talk to each other the whole. They were man and wife, I assume, and they didn't talk to each other the whole journey. And I sat in the front, and I was really scared because it was wow. usually getting to go. Oh, you know, you know have a chat. Well, was silence. They didn't talk to each other. Just down the, it was down the M4. It could have been Fred oh, West. Ah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it was, wow. it's really freaky when you when when something like slightly out of the ordinary happens. Did would you, you do it? Sin? Would you do it now? I don't think point? I would do it now. But you know, we did. We would. You just so. And I can't believe that as an eight. You know, your my parents let the eighteen year old child that was me do that. We you know we ended up hitching. I got a, a, a back of a, a an empty meat van, and was. <laughs> Which we literally couldn't see out of. So we were two, me and this America guy in the back of a meat van with the guy driving around. And then we could just see through a little crack. And he drove, we drove up to like an isolated farm and the car, and it stopped. What? If you're, wow. and if then, you're, <laughs> if you're in the back of an, an, empty, an otherwise empty meat van, you're the meat. Yeah, exactly. Uh. So I was a bit scared that time, but then he was just dropping something off and we quit, went on our way. But you know, he hadn't told us. <laughs> He hadn't told us we were going to be stopping. <laughs> and yeah, you'd willingly got in the back of someone's van. So it's a ridiculous thing to do. I was a beautiful 18-year-old. <laughs> it's amazing. There was one time I got picked up with my friend Jeff Quigley on the way back from Europe. And then this middle-aged woman picked us up. And she said, oh, I drove past you once and you were still there when I came back. And she picked us up and then she made me put the map across my lap to show us where we were going. And she kind of pointed at something that was where my penis was. <laughs> But I was still too in, 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 I was still too innocent to know that that was. That she, 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 couldn't, she gave us like a, a, a lift of half a mile wow. to somewhere less useful than where we'd been. Wow. We'd be passing the mountains. Was... On. <laughs> so you know, happy yeah. days. I don't know. I think it's. I, I would still advocate for hitchhiking, and also I think people have become so suspicious of it because people who hitchhike now are generally assumed to be weirdos because it's quite unusual. So yeah. I was in uh, Mallorca last year with, it was me and my boyfriend and my friend and her boyfriend. And they're all dead now, except yeah, now. They're all dead. <laughs> <laughs> and we were stuck in the middle of nowhere. And so they, the two guys, sent us off to go and hitchhike our way to safety and then find a taxi. And we, we literally couldn't, it took ages to get someone to pick us up because everyone thinks the hitchhikers are nut jobs. Sure. <laughs> you you, and we you did have you had Caesar salad dripping from your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> but usually, what happens in that? So you send the girls out to hitchhike, and then there's the boys are hiding behind a bush, and that's the that's the sitcom staple. Yeah. Yes, they weren't going to get in. They were just like, "Hey, would you mind sorting this out? We'll be here. Uh, can you come and pick us up in whatever mode of transport?" So they sent you, you to your deaths, essentially, yeah. in the hope that you could get. 
<laughs> yep. get some transport for them. And if you died, probably the police would have come and given them a lift. Exactly, yeah. yeah. So it's all... It's a win-win, isn't it? <laughs> it, was, it was good for them. Good, let's try another one and see what this... You know, that wasn't really the question. Uh, but have you ever seen a ghost? I find it no. unlikely. I think no. Dan might have done. No, I... Um, feels like you would have done. It feels like I would have done. <laughs> I saw a I saw people seeing a ghost, but not myself. What? Go on. We've all seen Ghostbusters now. <laughs> I've seen other people go, it's a ghost, and me looking at them at the time and then missing the ghost. You should have experience. looked at the guy when they say it's a ghost, don't look at the people saying yeah. it's a ghost. Look to where they're pointing. It's a massive regret, but I did, yeah. I looked towards them. I was like, you saw what? And then by the time I turned, ghost had gone, so... You're yeah. like a dog. When you throw a ball for a dog and you try and point at the ball, the dog only ever looks at you, and it's very frustrating. Yeah. It's like that. I That's me dogs with ghosts. Dogs can understand pointing, can't they? No, no. Never any dogs. Yeah. I thought dogs... I thought well, wolves, wolves can understand pointing. One uh, of the two. One according the, to Professor they? Alice Roberts, the dogs can understand pointing. Yeah. She I, has a chapter about dogs. Point. Yeah, yeah. I've, I have read that they can, but never in my personal experience. Mm. Have you ever had Professor dogs? Alice Roberts has experienced that, so it can happen. <laughs> A ghost. She's a ghost. No, a dog point, pointing for a dog. Ah, okay. right. Pointing a, a dog and the dog looking to where you're pointing. Okay. Do ghosts okay. exist? I yeah, shouldn't. totally. Oh, Anna does believe it. But I think Anna you're, does, Anna's yeah. the only one who believes that. Yeah. Four of us, I think. Mm. Yeah. yeah. I think they are time travellers who've dressed up in, <laughs> in era-appropriate dressing but yeah. got the time wrong. So yeah. when we see a Victorian ghost, we're like... Whoa, but actually they meant to go back to Victorian times as a time traveller, yeah. and that's confused us. I think... I had a theory about this. I think I might have slightly dreamt this one, and I'm not sure I'm going to get it entirely. I think when you die and go to heaven, you are allowed to come back to Earth one time and, and see stuff again, but you can decide when that is. Do you want to see your family grown up, or do you want to see what the future's like? And so that's why you hardly ever see cavemen ghosts, because they go, yeah, I'll come back and see my family, or I'll see what it's like in 20 years' time. Yes. They're not going to go, I'll come back in 2019, are they? It's not going to make no. sense to them. No. You never see cavemen ghosts. That's no. such a good yeah. call. Because they've already come back. They've already come back. You only get one go, and then you come back. Yes. And so, like, in an old place like Hampton Court, people say, oh, I've seen a ghost of an old woman in a... That's the different women coming back, going, yeah, I'm just going to have a look at Hampton Court, see what it's like. Okay. The 20th century, 21st century. Back. That's quite good justification. And yeah. they're always Victorian because you'd look that far ahead. You'd say, I'll yeah, go 200 hundred, years. Yeah. But yeah. You wouldn't go a thousand. I mean, you'd be waiting around as well, going, am I going to wait in heaven for a thousand years? Yeah. What if heaven gets shut down before I get to use my, yeah. my, <laughs> my one go back? I mean, I'd go back. I think I'd go back like to see my kids grown up, which I'm not going to see because uh, I'm too old. <laughs> so so I'd wait. I'd go forward to the year 2025 <laughs> to, see, to see how my kids have turned out by then. You're going to feel like a fucking idiot when you see your own <laughs> self there, perfectly healthy. <laughs> I don't think there are ghosts. I'm very surprised at any of you for thinking that. Uh, Anna um, genuinely does, though. You do. Oh, look, I only do because my mum's seen loads of them, and if I admitted <laughs> they weren't, then she would be an insane person. And it's hard to admit that about your mum. So, <laughs> um, so what? What are the? Fa I won't ask you the question, but what are the self-fellation facts that you have for me? Self-fellatio. Um, oh gosh. You know, um, seals give themselves blowjobs. Do they? The Do they? singer seal. <laughs> <laughs> That's what "kiss from a rose" means. <laughs> Is that true? Yeah, and you should look this up on YouTube and it feels really wrong, like you're watching porn, but you're not, you're watching a nature documentary. Well, but you are watching porn. If you start <laughs> wanking through it, you are. <laughs> <laughs> it depends how you use it. They do look up seals self autofillation. Yeah, I'm yeah. gonna. Well, I know. <laughs> what an individual. Everyone at home, please stop listening to this. Yeah. Go and look at seals. What, an individual seal is yeah. flexible enough. Yeah. Baloney. Absolutely. Yeah. I don't I believe it. I probably do watch the YouTube videos and it feels really weird and gross, but it is an interesting... No, but but push push, push through <laughs> and you'll... <laughs> the Attenborough commentary as well. <laughs> <laughs> he questions himself during it, doesn't he? <laughs> Here, are, are we sure? Should we be... 
I can't think of any other animals, and I didn't think seals did, but I can't think of any other animals that do that. It's either seals or whales, but it's, it's a big sea creature. It's what? <laughs> it's whales! It's I don't a, think it's whales. No whales. way is a whale flexible enough. It's, I can see a dolphin because it looks like they're trying to do that yeah. as they leap out of the water. <laughs> it's actually not a dolphin, I know. Pretty sure it's a seal. Is a, a whale ever put its penis in its own blowhole? That's what I'd do if I Oh, answer. well... They, they put their penises in each other's blowholes. Okay. Yeah, they do. That's true. They do, don't they? They do, do they? and dolphins do this, yeah. too. Dolphins do blowhole stuff. Um, <laughs> it's one of the, the options that they've got. Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're naturally intelligent and inquisitive animals, and they, you know... <laughs> Adult the video op- options. <laughs> do you want blowhole stuff? <laughs> <laughs> Tail action? <laughs> I'm just going to click the options tab. <laughs> How does the receiver of the penis feel about the the penis in the blowhole? I don't know. I mean, it's... I guess that's... um, It's how they breathe, isn't it? It's how they breathe. (laughs) But that's not... But so's a mouth in a way, isn't it? (laughs) In a way. (laughs) (laughs) Have you ever asked the receiver how they felt? (laughs) No, it's it's so hard to know what whales feel, isn't it? What, what? This chat feels like it's 3 a.m. We've smoked a lot of weed. We're back at Richard's house, and I occasionally look up and see all of you here. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck are we doing? I did read the other day that a blue whale's vagina is large enough for 11 men to lie down in. <laughs> <laughs> to lie down? Da- wait, as in? Side by side. Like, you know, in like 10 in the bed, the little one said, roll over where you're all right. right. No. Yeah. So that's a situation where 11 men have found themselves in a whale's vagina. <laughs> Let's have a quick sleep and then we will work out what we need to do from here on in. I don't know if that's true. I did read it, though. Is that a blue whale after it's had children or before? <laughs> <laughs> Come on. I mean, that's a, a blue whale's cock isn't as big as 11 men, is it? Um, so if that you, means... That if you means... bundled, what, like a sort of bunch of rods, 11 yeah. men together... Uh, yeah, that's a, no, that is a that is six very... foot high. Well, six foot high, sure, but as it might be. <laughs> what was the thing about a blue whale's fart that it's so... oh, it's big enough supposedly to hold a horse. Yeah. The bubble, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the bubble when they fart because it's underwater, it creates a bubble, and that bubble is big enough that a horse could a exist. Very unhappy inside. horse. Very unhappy horse. <laughs> horse. <laughs> Imagine what a rough time that horse has had. <laughs> <by> that <moment. laughs> Okay, I was definitely at the stables like an hour ago. <laughs> Had a few drinks with the guys. <laughs> Just waiting for the fart. Someone with a horse waiting. <laughs> <laughs> so many horses must drown. <laughs> and the one that doesn't drown is just in a fart. <laughs> it's got Why can I? It's got the scuba thing in its <laughs> mouth. All right, go! <laughs> would it float? It wouldn't float. It could fit inside. It wouldn't float out in a fart, would it? Oh, yeah. It would yeah. fall out the yeah. fart. Why? No, it wouldn't they, stay they, in the bubble. Boy, yeah, Unless they the wouldn't necessarily stay yeah. in the bubble. Well, you'd, you'd try it, though, wouldn't you? You'd be, <laughs> I'd try. What, to break out? I'd try to stay in the fart until I got to the surface. Yeah. You'd have to hold your breath. Because of the no, smell. No, I think you'd have to. I think you'd have to take that. You know, take you the have, lumps. You have to hold your breath underwater anyway. Don't you're in a fart. You if you're in a fart, you can breathe. Fart. You can breathe your way back to the surface and get out of this nightmare situation. <laughs> <laughs> I'd, I'd rather breathe some fart in briefly <laughs> than, yeah. than drown to death. <laughs> Is there air in a... There, there must be air in a fart. Whole, yeah. So yeah. You'd yeah. never get rid of the smell. It would be in your nostrils no, forever. I'd rather Even they would haunt you forever. I'd rather be dead than <laughs> have to spend the rest of my life have a whale's fart. Think and there's a horse in there with me as well, dying. <laughs> but that must be... There must be... Yeah, oxygen. there is oxygen in there. Okay, so if, you're, if you're on yeah. a ship and it was attacked by a massive blue whale and you were in underneath the water, you would for chances of survival, just swim towards its butt in order, <laughs> in the hope that that might happen, because that could save your life, right? Or to go to the vagina and hope the other ten guys <laughs> <laughs> have constructed some kind of hey, submarine. You <laughs> Get out! There's ten of us in here! There's no room for this! One more, one more! No! <laughs> Vagina's full! It happened on the Titanic, that's why so many people died. <laughs> 
So what do you think you're going to bring to the household? Um, Kate Winslet was in the vagina pushing Leonardo DiCaprio out. It's easy so doing your podcast. It's easy doing their podcast, and it? it's easy. Easy. Do sperm have dreams? <laughs> to stick on the oh. Can I? Can I? Before we answer that, yeah. it's, this is one of my favourite facts. Uh, okay. We've um, so we've been doing this tour, and uh, there was a fact about octopus on it. It turned so people have been observing. So octopuses or octopi. Uh, okay, Jesus, octopuses. Dan. Octopuses. Yeah. It's octopus or octopodes. It's never octopi. So octo. Oh, fuck. Sorry. Okay. Just... Well, octopuses. Let them say octopuses. Octop and you said octopuses yeah. the second time, which is <laughs> a couple of bootleg DVDs. And I said, so no, octopuses. Um, they have this incredible ability, which I think a lot of us know, which is that they can camouflage their body to the color of their surroundings. But not only their color, they can do the texture of their skin as well. So if they are on sitting on some seaweed and a predator comes, they can not only change the skin color to the seaweed, but they can change the texture of their skin to the to the texture of the seaweed. So they're perfectly mimicked. It's an amazing thing that they can do. James was saying that in controlled tanks, if they they were on a chessboard, they can change themselves to a chessboard. Like that's how brilliantly they can mimic their surroundings. And I read this thing the other day, and scientists are trying to prove this at the moment, but they've noticed when a sleeping octopus is being filmed, occasionally it will just suddenly change color out of nowhere. And they think that's because they're having a nightmare and they're trying to change their surroundings to the thing in their nightmare. Yeah. <laughs> that they're, but they've not yet proved REM sleep, so they don't know whether or not that's true. But there's these little moments where... Change. Yeah. But it is, it's REM sleep, which is the sign of things dreaming, which I don't know if sperm have been witnessed doing that. But the ones so. who do REM most are plat platypodes, yes. uh, aren't they? Platypuses yeah. uh, sleep, uh, dream the most. So of all the creatures on the face of the earth, they're having the most intense dreams. And I don't know about sperm. I don't know if I we've got close enough to sperm to see no. the REM flickering of the eyelids <laughs> <laughs> on the sperm cell. I think the lack of neurons probably... Oh, you can't be sure. Uh, but yeah. You know, what? there's this other, this other kind of... Um, so there are, there's two kinds of sleep uh, in which you act out stuff physically. So a lot of sleepwalkers sleepwalk, and that's in their very deepest sleep. But there's also a kind of sleepwalking or sleep acting, which is when you're dreaming. And it's called like... It's called like REM dream action or something. And it's when, you know, you're having a dream and then if you're having a dream that you're playing tennis, then you'll suddenly fling your arm across the room and hit your pillow. And that's really unusual. And a sign of early onset Parkinson's. Okay, I don't, I don't do that. <laughs> don't do it. <laughs> I have, Richard, I have a 18-month-year-old son. Huh? And is it mine? <laughs> <laughs> just, Sorry, I'm is this the wrong time to bring this up? <laughs> No, but last night he started sleep talking. Oh, and, yes. But the interesting thing is he doesn't know many words. Right. So he started saying new words and it was sleep talking with with words that don't exist. And right. have you experienced that? Where I haven't. No, I hasn't. He's just started talk, like saying, repeating things and he knows a few words, but he hasn't, uh, there's hasn't been seen his sleep. There's been some studies that the more that children babble when they're that age, the more creative they are when they get older. Oh, cool. Nice. He is, babbles. Well, that's good. I think there's a fact as well that children uh, practice saying daddy and mummy prior to actually saying it. So the first time you hear a child saying their first words, they've actually been for ages going, okay, don't fuck this up. <laughs> <laughs> daddy, mom. Okay, all right, we're going to go for it. We're gonna, let's do this. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I read um, a forum today, and it was about first words, and it was a woman saying... Um, Am I a bad mother because my child has just said the first word and it was shit? <laughs> and apparently they've been like, whenever the child like shits, they've been saying, oh, you just shit yourself, you just shit yourself. But they, <laughs> they thought that the child well, that's wouldn't... That's bad to say that. <laughs> yeah. But they thought the child wouldn't understand because they were so young. But then um, now whenever the child ever does go to the toilet, they just say shit all the time. <laughs> well, that's what it is. Yeah. yeah. But Fair if you're enough, listening, you are a bad mother. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
it's hard not to swear in front of them. And they, you do think that it's... I was much... Weirdly, I was much more prudish about it than my wife. My wife, especially with Phoebe, the first child, Phoebe was really swearing all the time. I said, you've got to stop doing that. She's going to start repeating it. Yeah. Uh, and she does now occasionally say something that sounds like fuck quite often. We go, what, what was that? Because <laughs> you can't quite work out what she's saying. Yeah, nothing, nothing. And then you can't really... You can't, it's difficult to then make a big you can't deal. Say, it. Did you say fuck? <laughs> what you, say? you can't say that, whatever it is you're saying. And I don't think it is fuck, but it's, it it's really sounds like she's saying fuck. <laughs> Oh, no. ah, she's outwitting you. She is. Like. Yeah. Not, not all the time, all the time. <laughs> um, look, we're going to have to wrap up soon. You're, you're doing a. I'm presuming the tours are going to carry on indefinitely. Yeah, our latest tour, European tour, will be finished by the time this goes out. Yeah. Uh, but hopefully, we'll be touring again in the. And so, you're getting, you're getting big audiences on the continent. Yeah, we just sold out Stockholm. Yeah. We? Oh, by the time um, this goes out, we've sold out them all, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, no, yeah, we have it's weird. I think all the English speaking, like yeah. all Scandinavian, they all speak such good English. Sure, sure. And do you do, have you done, I know you've started doing this around the country yeah. now. Are you going to go overseas with this? Or? I've been to Birmingham and that was, a, <laughs> it was shocking. It was a shocking experience for me. Yeah. And I'm not sure I can take any more cultural shifts. <laughs> <laughs> Um, we're thinking about it, but it's it's very interesting. You've, you've done New Zealand and Australia, yeah, haven't you? Yeah, that was, yeah, that was which, really good as yeah. well. You shouldn't have thrown yourself in at the deep end, I think, is what we would say. Yeah. Australia and New Zealand first. Yeah, head to the other yeah. side of the planet. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, it's, you know, it's so incredible. I know the porno guys as well, you know, within, you know, very quickly getting these massive audiences. You get, like, do you generally get, you get 1.2 million downloads per episode. Yeah, every oh, week. week. About that every week. So, yeah, 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 something like that. Yeah, we 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 um, it's slightly cheeky. And my dad wrote a porno. Jamie, the host of it, is in the crowd tonight. Um, we kind of basically watch what they're doing and we just <laughs> follow them. <laughs> so yeah, but it's but it's it's an extraordinary. I mean, as you've experienced as well, it's insane that we're able to do a podcast where we last year we played the Sydney Opera House and we sold it out, which is. Insane. That yeah. is insane for a podcast, which is recorded literally five minutes walk away from here in a room. And that's, uh, yeah. It's just the power of the internet, isn't it? Yeah. Like we put it out there and people are listening all over the world. And, yeah. you know, all they have to do is be able to understand what we're saying. And, yeah. Not yeah I think, like, for instance, when we did Perth was weird, wasn't it? Because that was on, it was about a thousand and something. Because they could the... barely understand what we were saying. <laughs> <laughs> it? But it's in the middle of nowhere, even for Australia. But there was still a room full of docs who just wanted to hang out and just tell us their facts. And yeah, <laughs> yeah. no, it's 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 incredible. Um, and it's a it's a pretty. I mean, there's a lot of episodes of it, I guess, aren't there? There's how many how many episodes? Have you too, done? Many, too, too many. Too many. Too many. I mean, you must uh, be repeating facts by now. We, I, I have a uh, I have a little spreadsheet I keep yeah. <laughs> of every every fact that gets said on the show. He and we he never repeat does. facts. We never repeat because uh, we've all got access to the spreadsheet. Right. So if we're researching snails or something. We will have to do a search of the spreadsheet and make sure we never repeat the same facts. Well, I mean, and you actually said that before in episode 139, <laughs> I think it was. Yeah. If a fact goes in twice, the second one goes in in red. That's my <laughs> warning to everyone else. <laughs> Don't fuck up again. Um, what I was going to ask you, Andrew, actually, was you're also an Ostentatious, which is a very successful, yeah. another very successful group thing, which I love. It's an absolutely brilliant show. I've seen it several times. If you had to choose, if it came down to both <laughs> this podcast and Ostentatious yeah. being about to become the biggest thing ever, but you didn't have time to do both of them, right. which one would you choose to do out of those two? Um, Are any of Ostentatious in tonight? <laughs> no, they might listen to this. They're doing a show. They're doing a show now. I've made my choice tonight. <laughs> yes, to come here. Well, Ostentatious has more people in it. There yeah. are eight people in Ostentatious, so it would make more of a difference to more lives if Ostentatious became the biggest thing ever. But I would feel bad about that, so I would have to leave Ostentatious and make seven people happier rather than making the four of us happier. Just answer the fucking question. <laughs> well, Hang on, uh, you're oh, saying... Well, oh, if you're going to be like that, I'll pick Ostentatious. <laughs> um, they're, very, they're really different things. Um... Yeah, we've been fighting for ages with the Ostentatious lot over which one of us is allowed to dump him first. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> We're coming to an arrangement any time now. <laughs> They're, yeah, they're, they're very similar in some ways that everyone involved hates me. <laughs> uh, 
it is, it is actually no it's weirdly similar is it in the, the thing we do where we read out a fact uh, or one one of us reads out a fact and the other three you know come up with a joke off the back of it or so, or we chat about it for a while it's just it's exactly the same as as improv you know where you get a title at the beginning of the show and away you go just answer the fucking question oh. <laughs> But they couldn't. Re- no, I don't think any of you are replaceable, though. In ostentatious, you can. You've got a, a, re- a recurring true. cast. Yeah. But I think if if suddenly you weren't there, have you done anywhere that all four of you haven't been there? Yeah. No. Well, all four of us. Never. Been. Never. No, 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 no way. way. <laughs> 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 now I think about it, it'd be a crazy idea. <laughs> People <laughs> still listen to it, though. Believe me. My fans would listen to that. <laughs> It's you wow. in four different <laughs> seats recorded over each other. Well, um, look, good luck with all the touring. Um, can we find this? There's a, why, don't you, why aren't you on Twitter? Is it just because your name's too hard to spell? Yeah. <laughs> lazy. It's too lazy. Never got on it and then it was too late. And then you don't want to join late because then you, don't, you won't have enough friends compared to everyone else. So I pretend I'm morally against it. Okay. Instead, it's much it's easier. Good, it's good thinking. Uh, so there's a, there's a website that can find out all about your, your uh, tour dates. It's probably called yeah. no such thing as a fish dot com. It's, yeah. it's actually called Richard Herring's list. That's <laughs> <laughs> good. Yeah, you everything is up there, isn't it? On yeah. no such thing as a fish dot com. Yeah. Whatever we're doing, yeah. it's up there. So, well, and listen to the podcast. It's, it is a fantastic, fun podcast, which I'm sure you listen to already. Ladies and gentlemen, my last guest in Les Square Theatre this series, no such thing as a fish. Thank you very much. <laughs> How do you like them sky potatoes? <laughs>